Tonight, Apple is ready for Yosemite, the beta anyway, Facebook's record mobile earnings, and how hot or cold is the new Amazon Fire Phone? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 135 for Wednesday, July 23rd, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Hello, I'm Sarah Lane, and first I'd like to say happy anniversary to all us here at the Twit Brick House. Three years here in the Brick House, and it feels like just yesterday. With that, let's get right into the tech feed. A day after its third quarter earnings report, Apple has announced the release of its Mac OS X, 10.10 Yosemite public beta, which will be released tomorrow, July 24th. Apple now generates less than 15% of its total revenue from Macs, but the company reported Mac unit sales rose 18% to 4.4 million in the latest quarter, ending June 28th. CEO Tim Cook said the Mac raised Apple's overall financial results as well. The beta version of OS X, 10.10 Yosemite, will be free, and the official version released in the fall will be free as well. Developers have had access to the beta Yosemite software since WWDC last month. In other Apple news, 9to5Mac reports that the company, Apple, is tentatively planning a keynote address in mid-September to announce the iPhone 6 and provide final details on iOS 8. This is according to anonymous sources. Apple is reportedly nearing completion of iOS 8 .0's development, and it plans to release a fifth and likely final beta to developers for testing on Monday, August 4th, according to these sources. Apple may even finish up work on the Beta 5 early next week, and a Golden Master version of iOS 8 could be completed in late August or early September. Rumors are still abounding that Apple is also planning a second event in October that will focus on Apple's upcoming wearable fitness band, yet to be named, but sort of known by everybody as the iWatch. Sources also tell 9to5Mac that Apple is finishing up work on a 12-inch MacBook with Retina display and a new desktop computer, possibly an iMac, or a standalone monitor with a 4K resolution screen. The California Emerging Technology Fund, or CETF, a nonprofit, says that a Comcast internet service program for poor people is too difficult to sign up for and has resulted in just 11% of eligible households in the state getting service. CETF was created by the California Public Utilities Commission when approving the mergers of SBC AT&T and Verizon MCI. Wow. Remember that? To accelerate broadband development for underserved or unserved populations. The group says that additional requirements should be imposed on Comcast as part of its pending acquisition of Time Warner Cable. Comcast was required to create the $10 per month Internet Essentials program in order to secure approval of its acquisition of NBC Universal back in 2011. In comments filed with the FCC, CETF says Comcast has signed 35,205 households out of more than 313,000 eligible ones in California alone. Nationwide, 300,000 families out of 2.6 million eligible have signed up. CETF claims that Comcast makes the sign-up process long and cumbersome and has violated program rules by conducting credit checks. The commission is urging the FCC to increase Comcast's commitments if that Time Warner Cable merger is approved. Well, Facebook had a pretty good quarter. Lots of earnings this week. The company's earnings beat projections for the eighth quarter straight with $2.91 billion in revenue in its second quarter of 2014. Facebook now has 1.7, 1.07 rather, billion mobile monthly users and 654 million daily mobile users with 62% of its ad revenue now coming from mobile. The company now has 1.32 billion monthly users and 829 million daily users, or 63% of users returning every single day. The stock was up 5.25% in after-hours trading to what would be an all-time high above $75 per share. 
Coming up, should Southwest Airlines have kicked off a passenger for a bad tweet? And up next, Lindsay Turrentine from CNET is going to join us with a review of the brand new Amazon Fire smartphone. But first, let's talk about a free and secure tool, personal capital, that solves two barriers when wanting to grow your wealth. You want to grow your wealth, right? Well, if so, it's hard to keep track of stocks. Yeah, stocks, there are two, 401ks. I've got like 10 of them. Bank accounts, they're all on different sites. You've got different usernames. You've got different passwords. Are you going to them every day? Are you forgetting some of them? Do they even talk to each other, right? Maybe you're paying somebody to manage your finances. Well, you're probably paying them too much. Personal capital brings all of these accounts and assets onto a single screen on your computer, on your phone, on your tablet, anywhere with real time and intuitive graphs. Recently, Personal Capital announced an app, award-winning app with Android Wear. It's available for download in Google Play Store. Uh, it's a watch app. It integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and gives users relevant and timely updates on their finances on the go. It's pretty cool. Shows you how much you're overpaying in fees. I bet you didn't know that a lot of those 401ks charge a lot of fees. How you can reduce those fees. You get tailored advice on optimizing your investment. So why wait? Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay back in spades. Personal capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions right now. To set up your free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. That's TN and the number two. Personal Capital is free and the smart way to grow your money. And thanks to Personal Capital for the support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining us now is Lindsay Turrentine, editor-in-chief over at CNET and now co-host of Tech News Today on Mondays. Hey, Lindsay. Hi, how are you? I'm very good. Thanks for joining us. This is your first time on TN2. Um, it's very exciting. It's very exciting, I know. Uh, all right, so uh, Cena posted a review uh, of the Amazon Fire phone, and yep. it says Amazon's gutsy phone fails to ignite. So what does the phone come with? What are the main features that are sort of lackluster? Well, okay, so Amazon tried really hard with this phone, and I think their tactic was to create a completely acceptable phone, smartphone for the modern era, and then throw in a couple of things that nobody else has. But I think what they ended up creating was sort of a, a mediocre smartphone with a couple of features that you probably don't need. So it has, um, it has a fairly nice design. You can hold it in one hand and operate it very easily. It's got a quad core processor, uh, doesn't, doesn't have quite the resolution that something like a modern Apple or Samsung phone would have, but it has a, a decent looking screen and the requisite number of buttons. Um, and it also has a couple of features that are sort of interesting. So there are four cameras on the front and those four cameras let you take uh, these sort of 3D looking videos and photos. And then on the phone itself, they sort of, they look like 3D. Amazon calls it dynamic perspective. It kind of looks like those stickers that used to be really popular in the like late 80s. And <laughs> you move them back and forth and you can actually see the, the picture move. So, so what's, the, cool. what's the main purpose of this 3D? I mean, is it a novelty? Is it honestly because they can say that they were first? Is it useful? It's, it's a novelty. I mean, just to be really honest, at the moment, it's a novelty because... It works in a few different sort of aspects of the of the phone. It works in maps, which is kind of interesting. So in the in the map program that comes with the phone, you can sort of see what you know, sort of in a real live situation, what the area around you might look like. But most you know, Apple's maps look not too dissimilar like that, except that mm -hmm. they don't move. It's not that different. Um, you can take some kind of fun pictures, and you can and it's it's sort of a party trick. But other than that. There's nothing essential about the 3D. There's some games that work with 3D. But again, to me, it might make me just feel a little bit sick. Well, you know, when it comes to any new operating system, and of course, Amazon is running its forked version of Android Fire OS, it's all about the apps. Are, are there a lot of apps available? Is this something that Amazon can compete with Google Play Store and the and 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 Apple's i i uh, Apple's App Store? <laughs> <laughs> it so. It has a decent number of the apps that you would expect, right? You can definitely get Facebook and Twitter and and um, CNET. You can get the CNET app. That's very important. It's uh, a but good you one. can't. I've got yeah, that yeah, one. Essential. Um, you <laughs> you cannot get 
some of the major Google apps. So Google Now, mm. you can't shop really the Google Play Store at all. Google Maps, and I'm sorry, I can't live without Google Maps. Like that right there is a deal breaker. YouTube, those are out. What about Mayday? Uh, this is the live tech support feature. Amazon is is proud of uh, the company says that it's it's being utilized quite a bit uh, by those who ha who have Kindle devices. Is this the sort of thing that can 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 push forward similar services from other companies? So Mayday, in case you're not familiar with it, is the push a button, get an Amazon rep right there chatting with you through the phone's camera. Uh, and helping you solve your tech support problems or any problems with your Amazon services. The service itself works really well and everybody who's used it feels pretty excited about that feature. And this is where Amazon really shines is in customer service and helping you get the stuff that you want working for you. If you're the kind of person who say runs your entire small business on the back of Amazon or you spend all day using Amazon services, it this might make the phone a little bit more compelling and I think it's something that other uh, other retail companies really should look at as a model. It, it's a pretty neat feature. Okay, so who is going to buy this phone? Who is the who who is right in the market uh, as far as the price goes? And, and, and why did Amazon build this phone besides just keeping up with other companies? Okay, so I honestly, if anybody came to me today and said, should I buy this phone? I would say, no, don't. I mean, really... Nobody should buy this phone until they work out the kinks. It's still a little bit laggy. It runs really hot. It's still a little bit buggy and the battery life seems to be pretty short. Uh, wait until the next generation, unless you're just really curious and you're already really invested in the Amazon ecosystem and you play all of your video and music from Amazon. In that case, you might want to consider it, but you're not really going to save much money because it costs the same as an iPhone or a GS5. And it... Um, you know, for the next little short period of time, you'll get a free year of Amazon Prime. But that's really about it in terms of savings. And you have to be on at and It's an so, interesting position for Amazon to be in, isn't it? Because, wait, you know, when you think about something like the Kindle, it's that was a groundbreaking tool. Hey, eBooks, it's 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 perfect. It's the it's the perfect tool. And then there were a lot of uh, imitators that came after. This is Amazon keeping up with other phone handset makers. It is. I think, you know, Amazon's always in it for the long game. And this is, I'm, I'm guessing that Jeff Bezos does not expect this phone to sell at the same levels and numbers that the iPhone does, for instance. I think what Amazon needs to do with this phone is figure out how a phone works for them, what their advantages are, and build it into the next version and the next version after that, which is kind of what you saw happen with some of Amazon's tablets. They weren't that great when they launched, but they've gotten a lot better. So this is really, I think, a learning tool for Amazon. And I think they had to do it if they want to make sure that Amazon is sort of always there with consumers everywhere they go. And they're going to use this to learn how to do that. I don't think this particular piece of hardware is the answer to that, but they'll learn a lot. Lindsay Turrentine is the editor-in-chief over at CNET and now the co-host of Tech News Today on Mondays, which is at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Thanks so much for joining us, Lindsay. Thanks, Sarah. It was fun. It was fun. And let folks know where they can keep up with you the rest of the week besides Mondays. Sure. Always at CNET.com and at L Turrentine on Twitter. Perfect. Thanks so much. Thank you. See you Monday. All right. Finally, I mentioned you might want to be nice to your gate agents on Twitter or face the consequences. So here's the story. A man named Duff Watson, Minnesota man, was apparently ejected from a Southwest Airlines flight for a tweet that called a gate agent rude. This is according to a report by CBS Minnesota. So after tweeting, the man was removed from the plane. He stated he was forced to delete the tweet before he could reboard. Now, Watson is an A-list passenger with Southwest. That means that he gets priority boarding. And apparently he was traveling with his two children that were not allowed to board the plane as priority passengers with him. The now deleted tweet said, wow, rudest agent in Denver, Kimberly S, gate C39, not happy. And then he tweeted at the airline, which is at SWA. This is what Watson told CBS. The agent threatened to call the cops. Apparently she felt her safety was threatened. Southwest has since apologized in an email to Watson and gifted him and his two children $50 vouchers. Watson says he will not be flying the airline again.
And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with questions, comments, or feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today. Lindsay Turrentine is on on Mondays, but there's a whole host of rotating guests tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Until then, I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.